Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord as we celebrate and worship together today. We're excited to have you with us, uh, those uh, here gathered today and also those watching online as well. We're very excited to uh, start our kickoff, our stewardship campaign. We uh, celebrate stewardship during the months of January and February uh, and then end right before Lent. Uh, where your treasure is, uh, there will your heart be also. I want us to celebrate that theme, thank God from whom all blessings flow, as we begin our time together. You'll note in the bulletin opportunities that we have today. We have our um, complimentary brunch uh, during our kickoff time. If you want to make donations, there is a basket there in the fellowship hall. But we love to have you come join us for brunch. We also have our church council next Sunday. Uh, we have aftercare uh, here and preschool, but aftercare uh, may need some more folks to help either as volunteers or employees, and there's a note there as well. Uh, and then our Bible study that begins on Thursday, January 26, 10 a.m., uh, discerning the voice of God. We'll hope you'll join us for that. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. But before we do that, I have a special birthday. There's a birthday tomorrow. Lynn Mandeville, our lay leader, has a birthday tomorrow. Now, we have a few next week as well, but let's wish, a, wish Linda, I mean, no, Lynn, a happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy Wonderful. And now let us stand together for our opening hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Let us stand.
us affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated if you'll take a look around and even up in the balcony and wave to each other. So good to see everyone this morning. Great to have you. Have some visitors and newcomers today. Wonderful. What a blessing to have you with us and those who are gathered together. We also are excited to uh, introduce you to Lynn Mandeville. Most of you know her, our lay leader and stewardship chair. You may be seated. Good morning. Thank you for the beautiful birthday song. That was very nice. This is a big one. So I can take all the comfort you can provide. Um, today we're going to talk about the launch of our stewardship campaign. I want us to think about a personal relationship with God will guide your attitude toward gratitude and open your heart to signing your stewardship pledge card with joy and thanksgiving. The Bible tells us repeatedly that God wants to move into our hearts and be a participant in our lives, not a spectator. He tells us he wants to be a presence in everything we do. How wonderful is that? Since God is love, and he created us in his own image. Our DNA abounds with love. Embracing God is the key to unlocking our expression of gratitude for his many amazing gifts, so many that we just take for granted. From our beautiful sunrises and sunsets to the individual gifts we experience every day, through the amazing gift of his son, Jesus. He should be thanked and appreciated continually. Our constant communication with him does not require beautifully worded sonnets. It can be as simple as, thank you, God, an acknowledgement that we are aware and grateful for his presence, involvement, and love. As simple as waking up every morning, throwing our feet over the side of the bed, taking a deep breath, and saying, thank you, God, for watching over me as I slept and for awakening me with a day full of your presence and promises. Just think in your life what a simple text from a family member or a loving friend can mean to your day. God loves it when we message him with our gratitude. No internet provider required, no high-tech tools needed, just direct communication from us to our Father. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords wants to be your closest friend 
helping you answer the issues you face daily, the large and the small. I have experienced that. Many of you remember when my husband, Billy, was so sick. I was still working full time in a very demanding position while trying to make the right decisions for him and serving as his primary caregiver. Without God's intervention and supervision, without his constant presence, without him giving clarity and sending beautiful people to support us. Frankly, without him carrying me most of the time, I have no idea how we would have made it through. He was there every moment and every step of the way. Tapping into the mind-boggling opportunity of having God walk with you will change your life. Thank you, God, for your unending love. Perfecting our attitude toward gratitude will allow us to reach both our stewardship goals and our own life goals. Over the next few weeks, you will hear from members of our congregation about their attitude toward gratitude. And in a few days, you will receive a letter and a pledge card. Your prayerful conversation with God will lead you to your stewardship decision. And then on Sunday, February 19th, we will celebrate our achievement of funding our budget for 2023. And we invite you to join us in the fellowship hall after service today to celebrate the beginning of stewardship season. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you, God. Our scriptures this day come first from Luke, chapter 6, verse 38. Hear now the word of God. Give, and it will be given unto you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure that you use, it will be measured unto you. And then from 2 Corinthians 9, 7, and 8. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Finally, from 1 John 3, 17 and 18. If anyone has material possession and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your presence. May my words become your message for each of us, your people. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we began our five-part sermon series on stewardship 
Now that word alone can frighten some people, even clergy, unless you understand its context. You see, for a Christ follower, recognizing that all that we are and all that we have and all that is entrusted to us is a gift from God. Even in our baptismal vows, we declare we are initiated into God's holy church, incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation. We're given new birth by water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. We are then told by name, may the Holy Spirit work within you that you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to live as a faithful disciple? It involves a heart for God filled with gratitude and a heart for our neighbor filled with love. It leads us to consider our role in God's purpose and plan. Stewardship is responsibly allocating management, oversight of all that is entrusted to us. It involves us creating a long-term value that enhances what God is already at work doing, sustainable benefit to our community, to our people, to our children, to our nation, relational transformation, and especially transparency. For the Christ follower, follower, the foundation for all that we are and all that we have is this loving and connected relationship with God. You see, for God so loved the world, he sent his son. Faithful stewardship is an expression of our intimate love for God a discerning wisdom, listening clearly, what has God, what does God need, and what has God asked us to do and to be. Growing in grace and gratitude will produce the fruit of the Spirit evident in our lives. Now, part of our experience of God's nearness and provision is that clear recognition that God wants to trust us with something bigger than ourselves. Will we be trustworthy? Will we have the best practices available to us to manage our time, our talents, our possessions, our abilities, even our relationships with one another? All play a part in how we tend the garden that God has given to us as our life. Each of us will be held accountable. How did you tend your garden? Your garden of your ability and your talent, your garden of your work and your play, your garden of relationships. How did you tend your garden? You see, stewardship involves being responsible for what we've been given. It's not meant to be a burden. It's actually meant to be a joy a joy that we can be found trustworthy. And when you are found trustworthy, more is entrusted to you. Not necessarily more stuff, but more influence, more relationship, more experience, because you have been found trustworthy. God can depend on us as partners in what he wants to accomplish in our community, in our church, in our schools, in our world. As Christians, we have to have a broader view of stewardship. It's beyond budgets. It's beyond an institutional need. It's really what is our life together going to do to make the difference in this world. It's an honor and a privilege to be trusted. It's a joy to see the fruit of your labor magnified and multiplied because God is in the heart and the center of it. 
Many years ago, Alfred Nobel, a Swedish chemist who made his living inventing dynamite and explosives, which in turn were bought by major governments around the world to make weapons, received a newspaper. Alfred Nobel, a friend wrote a note. I know you're still alive, but someone thinks you've died. In this newspaper, because Alfred Nobel's brother had died, someone got a hold of the information and printed it as if he had died, not checking the facts. He saw his name on the obituary page. He was described as a man who became very rich, enabling other people to kill one another. The newspaper accidentally printed this information about him. This is a true story. Alfred Noble read this and it convicted him. I do not want to be remembered this way. He started the Nobel Peace Prize. He began to channel his resources and his money into acknowledging those around the world who are benefiting our communities, our nation, our world. Swedish Nobel Prize is a highly acclaimed prize for what betters humanity. This is what he wanted to be remembered for. Now, C.S. Lewis once said, you can't go back and change the beginning but anyone can start where they are and change the ending. Our baptismal vows point to this as well. We say we give thanks for all that God has already given you and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you, we renew our covenant to faithfully participate in the ministry of this church with prayer, presence, gifts, service, and witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. I want you to think for a moment. You and I have to make decisions in our lives every day about stewardship. Think about it. The ones who you trust with your business or financial dealings, the ones who you have help you raise your children in daycare, or educate your children in school, the ones who help make our community decisions about infrastructure and development, our representatives, our government officials, locally, nationally. These are steward decisions. Who and how and what and why can someone be trusted with your resources. If you invested in a group and all of a sudden it was found out to be a scam, how would you feel about how they stewarded your money? Very upset. If you put your child into a school and all of a sudden began to realize something just wasn't quite right, you would be upset. These are stewardship decisions. God entrusts his church to partner with him to make a difference in the world, not just to prop up a building, not to keep it clean, but those are parts and pieces, to make a difference in the world. This is a stewardship decision. The wise turn to God and ask who am I in your plan, in your purpose? What role can I play? God is stepping out on a limb when he trusts us individually and as a body called his church. In any steward decision, there are four principles. Who is the owner? Who is entrusted with responsibility? Who are they accountable to? What is the reward and the return of this trust? In terms of spiritual stewardship, we start with God owns all of it. We are simply managers of what God already owns. 
Two, we are responsible for it. We are accountable to God and to one another with all that's trusted to us, resources, time, relationships. And four, the reward to God is to see us grow and thrive. The reward to us is to see our own lives dedicated in an effort bigger than ourselves, making that difference. Psalm 24 tells us that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it and all who live in it. Our greatest resource is, in fact, each other, our relationship to God and to one another. Gratitude is at the center of that connection. Our three texts today remind us that the reward of our generosity to God is blessed. In Luke, give and it will be given unto you for the measure which, which you use will be the measure used back to you. Second Corinthians, each one must give as he has decided in their heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. God loves a cheerful giver. And finally, from 1 John, the reward of compassion and connection. When we see our brothers and sisters in need and make that difference, we invite you to do that through the church, with the church, and in the community. When in 1 John he says, how does the love of God abide in anyone who has the world's goods but closes his heart against those in need? Let us not love with empty word, but in action and in truth. May God continue to move us nearer and closer to him and to one another as we honor his design for stewardship, for the management of his planet, the management of our relationships. May we do this to bring honor and glory to God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our song of reflection is Seek Ye First. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we come before you, mindful of the wondrous love you offer to us in Jesus Christ, the gift of life itself, of breath and talent and ability, relationships and friendships. May we never take anything for granted, O oh God. We know that you desire to trust us with what you have provided in your creation, you have trusted us with this beauty. In our ability, you have entrusted to us what we might do 
to work or to thrive, to engage one another. You have trusted so much, O oh God. O oh Lord, may we grow in our faithfulness in all that we do, to grow in our ability to manage and invest, to multiply, to magnify your grace, your goodness, your love. May we be found faithful in all that we are and all that we do. O Lord, we offer all of our prayers in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand together for our closing hymn, My Hope is Built. As we receive God's benediction, I'll also offer a blessing for our lunch together uh, so that you can move to the Fellowship Hall area and begin uh, breaking bread together. Let us receive the benediction. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for the ways that you provide for us. For today, an ability, an opportunity to break bread together. O oh Lord, may we open our hearts, our minds, and our lives, and our relationships to your presence and your power, your purpose. As we gather to break bread, we acknowledge that you are the giver and the provider of all good gifts. And Lord, may you take us each one, enable us to sense your nearness, receive your forgiveness, and move forward in your joy. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.